Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And in this video, we are going to look at how to import and transform data in Power BI Desktop. So we are working on a subscription model business and we need to get data from different sources. We're going to get it from three different sources into a model for further analysis and reporting. And you can see from my home tab here that we have this get data button. And this is where you will typically begin to go and grab that external data. And for this first example, I'm going to get some data from a folder. Now I do not see folder as an option at the moment. I see some really good options, but not the one I want. So I will click on more. And this will open a complete set of options. Wow, look at all of these options. Lots of different sources for data. Fantastic. Now the one I want was actually near the top. It's the fifth one down, folder. And I will click on connect after selecting it. And this is going to prompt me for where is this folder that you speak of? Let's click on the browse button and go and tell it where it is. Well, it is in my desk documents area. Where's my documents area? This PC documents. And if I come into here, where are we? Subscribers folder. And in here I have another subscribers folder. And that contains two CSV files, which I want to use. Now, if you have downloaded the files to follow along, they are available in a link in the description of this video if you don't already have them you will need to go to the area where you have downloaded them to, where you have saved them. For me, they're here. If I click OK, in goes the path, and I will click OK again to connect to that location. And here we are. We have two CSV files and some information about them. At the bottom, we have a few buttons to combine them, load them, cancel, or the one I want, and I always encourage people to go for edit, so that we can get a look at our data, start to perform further transformations if needed. Always a good habit to press edit, and we'll be doing that with all of our imports. Here are the two files again, now shown in the Power Query Editor. First thing you normally do in here, is change the name of the query on the right hand side. It currently has the name of subscribers and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to leave that. All I want to do is expand these two files so that the two CSV files will be stacked into one big table so that I can use that as my fact table when we start creating our reports. Where we have this content field, there's a couple of double down arrows. And as I hover over, it tells me that's the Combine Files button. And I'm going to combine both these files. What this stage is really good for is we can start using these filters on the headers. So there are other files in here. I could filter the CSV files out, or I could filter by some kind of date information anything so that you get the ones you want from this folder because you might not want all of them. I do, so I'm going to hit my Combine Files button. Here it goes, evaluating the query. Let's just give it a moment and we get an insight into those files. Don't they look fabulous? We have a date and time column here, or really it's just a date column. We have the type of product, whether it was a free or premium subscription, a country code and how many years. And there's two different files here. We have a new file for new subscribers and a renewals file for renewing subscribers. This is the new one, so no years. Uh, the renewals will have how many years they've been with us. How many times have they kept coming back and coming back? 
I'm going to check the box to skip files with errors at the bottom. Uh, this can be useful, especially if there is a potential that other users could be interacting with these files. Because if one of these files, new or renewals.csv, is open at this given point, that will interfere with how this data refreshes. If I click OK, that's going to start stacking these or appending them into one uh, monster list. And it creates these queries on the right hand side and also these custom functions and tables. And on the right, you can see a, a series of applied steps here where it started to filter and invoking that custom function and eventually ending up with a change type step, which for any of you who are familiar with Power Query will be familiar, very familiar with that step. Now, all I'm going to do here is do a few simple transformations, really, just to get this up and working. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is with this first column called name, um, I want to remove this .csv part. I know why that's there, that's the name of the file, but really I can use this column for the type of subscription. Was it a renewal or was it a new one? So I'm going to select that column, although it's already selected for me. And on the home tab, we have a replace values button, just like you get find and replace in Excel. The value to find for me is .csv, Let's try that again, CSV, and I'm going to replace it with nothing. If I click OK, it ruthlessly takes out all the .csvs, and that's good. Now I can just see whether they're new or renewing. And that step is added to the right-hand side. I'm now going to double-click on the column header so I can rename that something appropriate, like type. That would be a really creative and useful uh, header. Now the next step is with this date column. It seems to be recognized as date and time. You always wanna check the data type of these columns. So I've got text, I've got another two text, I've got a numeric one, and then this date one. Now I wanna make that a date column. And there we go. We now have this information stored as dates only. I don't want any of that time information with it. And I think that's it. Just a few simple transformations. We have what we want. In the top left corner, there's a close and apply button. For those of you who've used Power Query, you may be used to seeing that button saying close and load, and you get different options about where you can load it to normally, such as a pivot table or a data model or a table in a worksheet. Here it's quite simply close and apply. And that's just going to close it and apply all of those steps into the model. So it doesn't actually load it to a worksheet in the way that Excel can. It's gonna load it straight into that model in the background. And you can see that it's doing it here. We have, we have just shy of one million rows in that fact table, or that data table we've just, just loaded. Okay, that's in. We can't really see it at the moment because we're in this report view. But if I was to go over to the data view, and wow, here it is, here's all our data. And look at the bottom, 942,079 rows. Wow, just shy of 1 million rows of data. A huge data set. It could be a lot bigger than this as well. But you see how Power BI, you know, it took a few seconds to load it into the model, but nothing crazy. Whereas data that size, you can't work with that in an Excel worksheet. You could use Power Pivot and the model available within there. So it's not like Excel can't do it, but Power BI Desktop was built for this. Big data, powerful calculations, fantastic visuals. Okay, let's go and get our next source of data. Get data, this one's coming from Excel gotta have some data in Excel don't you documents folder subscribers folder there it is it's called packages I'll open up this Excel file and we will get a preview here it is now there are two things in this preview the first one is the table if I click on it the table 
It's only a tiny table. I hope you didn't expect much there. We have the package, premium or free. So what type of uh, subscription package have they ordered? Free is obviously free. Premium comes at a price. twenty three ninety five in the uh, this year's worth of fictional data. We also have this other one down below. And hey, it's exactly the same. So the first one is the table. This data is formatted as a table on the worksheet. The second one is the name of the worksheet. That's the tab, the worksheet tab. Now I'm going to tick the table. I've got it in the table, but that's why it's appearing twice. Load or edit, always a good habit to go into edit first rather than just loading it straight in. Although in this scenario, I don't think there's anything to do, so we probably could have loaded it straight in. You can see the name of the query on the right hand side called D product. Uh, you see a lot of people putting letters D or F in front of their table or query names. So the D is dimension. It's a dimension table called product. Uh, I haven't bothered putting an F in front of my subscribers uh, query from before, which you see a lot of people do because it's a fact table. Whereas others like myself here, fact tables just get a name, dimension tables get a D, so we know they're dimension tables. Otherwise known as lookup tables. Uh, this all looks fantastic, so I'm going to click close and apply, and that will get loaded into the model teeny teeny tiny lookup table. And let's go get more data. This time it's coming from a text file, text slash CSV. There it is, it's jumped to the same location. It's called countries. It's the information about the countries, the different regions which we have managed to entice subscribers from. Here's a preview when loading from a text file. See what the previews are slightly different in their appearance. Asking me what the delimiter is. Uh, yeah, it's detected, it's a tab. We can see there's an issue here with the column header. So we've noticed that because of this preview, that's great. Let's definitely click on edit because we need to fix that. There is something to do here, although it's not much. Here's the data loaded. On the right hand side, we can give our query a name. Let me put a letter D in front of the name because it's a dimension table. And then let's go for the button to use first row as headers, which is on the home tab. And that will load that first row into the header area, an issue that we identified at the preview step. And then we can close and apply this into our model. So we have all three tables loaded. And we can see them on the right hand side in this fields area. D countries, D product, and the fact table subscribers. And you can see underneath how it identifies we have a date field and also a numeric field identified from that sigma, that kind of sum icon. A little bit misleading, just means it's numeric, expecting you to use it in measures. We can collapse that, I don't really need this all expanded, not that it's doing any harm. And if we now were to come over and look at things like report view, it still doesn't really look any different, apart from you have the fields area on the right hand side here too. And then we have diagram view, and we can see the three tables loaded in here also. Now, maybe let's look at my data view again. We've loaded these three tables in, we've performed some transformations, making sure our dates are formatted correctly as dates, making sure we cleaned up, you know, uh, bring those headers into the top row, or the top row as headers. But I've just noticed that in the subscribers fact table, the first column called type, renewals, and new. Wonderful. But maybe I would prefer it if they were in proper case. It's got a lowercase r for renewals, lowercase n for new. You can actually scroll through all this data set, by the way. Whoa! So you're scrolling through hundreds of thousands, and here's the new ones, all in lowercase too. Maybe I don't like that. Let's go back to the home tab, edit queries. That will bring you back to the Power Query Editor. And it's actually taken me to subscribers, but I could select the correct query from the left hand side here. With the type column selected, transform tab, 
format button, capitalize each word. Now that's what I wanted. The step is added to the right and I can go back to home and I close and apply. And all these, let's call it 1 million rows, well that's a little short from that, will be reloaded into the model. And you can see it pump through it right now. And they're in. See, so we have it. We have our three tables. Data imported. In the next video, we're going to be looking at actually building up our model, relating those tables. We need to also look at how to create a date table. So we'll get a first glimpse of some DAX formulas in Power BI Desktop.